Hi, my name is Joshua Bro. I work for the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry. As a member of the planning team, I know that forest management planning isn't just about cutting trees. It's about planning roads, building bridges, as well as protecting habitat. Let's go meet some of the members of the Hearst Forest Management Planning Team. I'm George Graham. I'm the senior forester with Hearst Forest Management, Inc. I've been uh, in this role since 1998, and prior to that I had other roles as silvicultural forester and planning forester. So we work with a team of uh, foresters and forest technicians here. The group is uh, very uh, highly trained. They, they have either uh, college diplomas or university educations. We also have a couple of uh, geographic information systems technicians. and that pretty much rounds out the team. So Hearst Forest Management was uh, formed in 1986. It's a cooperative sustainable forest license. It was the first one in Ontario and it's the one today that has uh, the widest base of community interests uh, in it. There are three shareholders, uh, Tembeck Inc., Columbia Forest Products and Liqueur Lumber as well as the communities of, uh, of Hearst and Matthijs Felcote and Constance Lake First Nation, all are represented on the board of directors. So um, part of our mandate, or our main mandate, is to look after the Hearst forest. That's one and a quarter million hectares of crown land that uh, Hearst is largely in the middle of, and the, the communities I mentioned then all live within this forest. A major aspect of our work is preparing forest management plans. We need to prepare a plan every five or ten years depending on the scheduling that the ministry um, assigns to us. The plan process is it's, it's a long process and I, I think it needs to be a long process. It takes roughly three years to write a ten-year plan. That's just the planning part of the plan. That is three just years. what it takes to get to an approved plan. That's a long time. It takes roughly a year and a half to do all the strategic planning. That's coming up with how much wood do, you, do we, can we get off the forest? How are we going to deal with all the habitat considerations? How are we going to provide for those areas of concern? Then it takes about eight months to a year to do the actual operational planning. That's actually putting the colors on the map and saying, yep, that's going to be a harvest block and that's where the reserves are going to be and where we're going to plant, where we're going to leave for natural regeneration. One aspect of preparing a forest management plan is to ensure that the areas that are planned for harvest also get properly re regenerated, that we regrow the forest back on there. Uh, there are a lot of requirements around standards for the quality of that forest. The forest needs to provide also for the mix of habitat for the various wildlife that are on the forest and the needs of biodiversity. So a, a very focused part of that program is how we regenerate the forest. and and um, is one specific area that foresters are trained in is to set silvicultural prescriptions for regenerating that forest. We identify the areas where we want to harvest and those are the areas that get colored on the map. What these different colors mean is once it's harvested, what we're going to do to regenerate it so it stays for us. The gray areas are areas where we're going to artificially regenerate, so tree plant. Okay. The peach areas are the areas of clag. 
um, which are careful log logging around advanced growth. And the green areas are areas where there's enough aspen there now that we feel after we harvest it, aspen uh, regenerates naturally through root suckers. The next crop will grow from those root suckers. As it is, we plant about 30% of the sites on Hearst Forest that get harvested only. The other 60 to 70%, we plan for natural regeneration on those, and that ties into the types of soil and sites that are there and the types of forest. Planting trees is specific to a very few species only. We regenerate black spruce, white spruce, and jack pine by planting. And the reason we do that is largely because the sites that we're putting those trees on are in past times uh, regenerated after wildfire. Nature creates the conditions from a fire, it opens up the forest canopy, it burns off the moss of the seed bed and allows the seed to fall from those dying trees to start the next forest. So this, I mean, this, this fire burned in 2016 in the spring. And this, this was how big, you said? This was about 400 hectares. To a large degree, it's going to regenerate itself. Mm -hmm. I, these, uh, young you, poplar? Yeah, you've got the young poplar coming up already. This is, I mean, it's only one season. And uh, you've got some that are five, four or five feet tall mm -hmm. already. We're trying to lay out our cuts as a fire would have burned. So it's more irregular shape, more... Um, you know, less straight lines, kind of going in a, from the southwest to the northeast direction. That's the prevailing winds. That's how fire would have gone. But there's a whole bunch of, a whole bunch of good things that happen with fire. It's, it cleans up disease, it cleans up seed bank, it, it uh, cleans up a bunch of problems. A lot of people don't, don't realize it, but at some point trees, if they don't, aren't renewed, they will just get old and die. And, and without forestry coming through and, and renewing that site, how long would it have taken to put trees back onto that site? In the forest, if there isn't an intervention by management practices to do some thinning, uh, the forest will begin to thin itself out anyway. It's a slower process and, and the, the stronger trees will outcompete the weaker trees and the weaker trees will, will die. Um, there are management provisions where uh, we can go in also and thin those forests out and remove forest products at the same time. So instead of losing um, material to, to, to mortality, we can recover that and make use of it. It's taking the trees and turning it into a commodity, lumber, or pulp or paper or whatever, prior to them dying or being burnt. And then the forest companies are responsible to renew that, yeah. which I may be biased, but I think that's a win-win. Fire renews the forest, forestry renews the forest, keeps everything young and vibrant and, and vital and perpetuating. There are a lot of similarities between harvesting and, and fire, but it isn't identical. Um, the similarities are that harvesting removes the canopy, allows the sunlight to get to the forest floor, um, very similar to fire. Where it can differ from fire is that it doesn't prepare the seed bed as well, and it doesn't hold back some of the competing vegetation. So on sites like that, we will usually put bulldozers into their large D8 caterpillar tractors, uh, either with a, an angle blade in the summertime or in the wintertime with a shear blade. And the shear blade has a very sharpened knife edge on it. Uh, it's amazing the work that it can do. Right now we're in the, the G10 block. It's uh, off the G10 road. It's just west of the Sheikak River, uh, south of Highway 11. Um, this site was harvested winter of 2017. It's a site that we're going to have to plant to get it re regenerated because there's not an appropriate seed bed. There's brush and debris and, and, and residual stems that we want to open the site up and we do that with site preparation um, using D8 tractors and shear blades. Uh, 
Uh, I'm Dave Field. I work for Thunderhouse Forest Services. For this project, I'm working for Hearst Forest Management. I'm the on-site supervisor for the mechanical site prep. For the site prep, they use uh, a shear blade. The operators sharpen the blades uh, daily and uh, they kind of make uh, one pass at the land. It kind of clears it up and uh, removes some of the debris and snow on site. And then they'll let that freeze up usually for at least a week. Uh, and then on the second pass, they're able to get their, their blades uh, deeper into the material. And uh, it clears it up uh, quite a bit and it, uh, it shears off uh, sort of stumps and uh, woody vegetation. And some of this land without the site prep, it wouldn't, uh, they wouldn't be able to, to plant it. The overall goal is to get a healthy forest back, and that's what we want to do. We've come in, we've taken a first crop, now we're planting it and regenerating it, and it'll be here for 90 to 100 years from the time it's planted to the time we're in to harvest it again. Sometime after I've retired, a long time after I've retired. Other sites, there may be not so much logging slash on them, but they may be still very heavily brushed over. We, uh, we can get the plantable spots in there without using the, the bulldozers, but we may turn to using herbicides for that. We may put an aerial spray of herbicide on it. Following spring we get in there and plant it. Two to three years later the shrubs are beginning to, to re-establish and grow again. So in the truck you're about 45 minutes from town to this site. So this site was sprayed back in 2005, so it was the year after it was planted. And the reason it would have been sprayed is because, you know, you would have had a lot of this competition overtopping the trees already. The, the objective is not to have no leaf trees at all. Like the objective wasn't to completely kill off the pin cherry, the trembling aspen that we have just in the back here. The goal is to allow the conifer tree, so this is a black spruce tree here that was planted, is to allow these trees here to establish themselves, put a root system in, get some height to them, and be free growing. Once we've got an idea of where we can go on the forest to get the products that everybody wants, we have to figure out how to get there. So we propose roads to get to the various parts of the forest, and then we have areas where we want to put water crossings, where we can put water crossings. Which is either a bridge or a culvert. Or it could be snow and ice. If or a winter crossing. Winter okay. crossings could be snow and ice. It's only there for the winter. We're here on the Nonagoose Road at the location of a bridge installation. When we were here earlier this summer, all that we had at this site was, uh, was a log that was put across the creek to provide access to the technicians to get on the other side. That was for a couple reasons. One of the reasons was to align the road on, on the opposite side of the creek to make sure it was in the best location possible and also to allow forest technicians to go in and put flags to mark the boundary of the harvest block. The road and the bridge was installed to provide access to a harvest area that we're going to have operations for a couple of years, as well as the road will provide access for the reforestation activities. In terms of the duration of a structure like this, the forest industry will leave the bridge in until all the tree planting has been done or any natural regen that has to occur behind here 
all of the surveys to make sure that the forest is growing as per plan and that can take up to 10 years. So after 10 years, we might see some of these crossings being removed and to be used elsewhere. Mon nom est Anage Larose, je suis la direction générale de Hearst Forest Management Inc. One of the big roles for Hearst Forest Management is uh, actually we kind of house the data for the forest. A lot of that is actually paper cartography that used to be drawn by hand. We still have all of those records, so over 30 years of forest management planning is, is kind of archived here at HFMI. And so some of the past forest management planning I'll give you a sense of how things have changed. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Well, this is the 1974 inventory. That's all before my time. <laughs> well, you've got your Jack Pine 1 and your Black Spruce 2, so it's still the same labeling, largely. Everything drawn up by hand. What's more exciting is that um, increasingly the role of forest management is very digital. It's very much about data. So we utilize a slew of tools, um, LIDAR. Uh, we use also SAP photography. So these are aerial photos that are utilized and stereo imagery to do interpretation. And so um, HFMI actually holds well over 40 terabytes and manages that data. And all of that data serves um, planning. It also serves operations. It serves compliance. It allows us to plan uh, more effectively and more efficiently for water crops crossings, for where roads are going to be developed, um, to also being able to identify values um, just from our offices. And uh, it also provides a great tool for compliance and uh, for tree plant and then for assessment in the future. And one of the great ways um, that we utilize that imagery is we use tablets. So it locates you and one of the things that we do, so if we have to go on site and identify a pipeline crossing or where a road's going to go, uh, we can just kind of zoom into our map and one of the tools that uh, we will be using on site is utilizing the imagery that we've got, which still gives you, which will give you the overlay, and then you can actually go on site and tag the different areas, whether it be a stream, uh, a crossing, uh, a bird's nest, whichever one that you're gonna come across in the field and whatever your purpose, uh, that imagery and that data can then be loaded up onto the tablet. Now you can take a picture, you can uh, tag your location, and then put in the place marker, uh, take a picture, take a video, and do a description. And then when you get back to the office, uh, then you have all that data. It can be loaded up into our system and make that available to all of our licensees. So now all they need to do is to come in with a USB stick, or we can just do a file transfer online, and they have access to all of that data. Mm -hmm. One of the technologies that you're going to go see is actually the stereo imagery, which a compliance officer is currently looking at targeting different areas of where there's going to be perhaps um, stop hills or veneer, and you can actually identify the tree species by just looking at the imagery. So that's why it is such a great tool, um, and it really allows you to plan ahead where you're going to go, and you're kind of not blindsided when you're going out to the bush. Fait que moi, le but, c'est tout de vérifier mes blocs comme ça, que je suis capable de voir en trois dimensions qui a été bûché l'hiver passé les regarder passer au moins une heure à regarder tout ce que c'est que je peux pour être confiant que quand je release le bloc que je dis que c'est final, ben il n'y a, a pas rien de majeur. Là. Mm -hmm. fait que je fais rien que me promener comme ça dans le bloc, que je vérifie. Quand je vois quelque chose de pas correct, que je zoom in de plus près, puis je me mets à coordonner UTM pour pouvoir aller vérifier en forêt, pour faire sûr que si je dis aux compagnies qui ont fait un, une erreur, que c'est vraiment une erreur, c'est pas euh, c'est pas moi qui le fait là mm -hmm. fait que je vais t'en montrer un exemple ça la technologie te permet de voir tout le bûcher c'est ça c'est ça mm -hmm. quand que je commence là, là d'aller cibler des endroits à vérifier plus près c'est ça c'est en plein ça que c'est quand j'ai euh, quand j'ai zoomé in de plus près je m'aperçois que c'est un c'est un skidway de venir slasher en huit pieds on a du temps à zoomer, hein? <rire> fait que tu vois, là, tu es capable de mesurer, là, c'est tout du blanc. C'est tout environ 8 pieds de long, là. Fait que c'est un... D'après moi, c'est un... C'est un, un skidway de venir qui ont oublié de sortir avec les camions. Donc, c'est une place qu'il faut aller vérifier, puis après ça, on... on envoie l'information aux compagnies, puis eux autres nous laissent savoir qu'est-ce qu'ils vont faire avec ça. Mm -hmm. euh, on peut pas tout le temps les envoyer dans le bloc, parce que c'est... C'est assez dispendieux. 
Ça fait que c'est eux autres qui décident qu'est-ce qu'ils veulent faire, mais ça reste, s'ils vont pas, ça va rester quand même sur leur, sur leur dossier, là, qu'il y a eu un, un wasteful practice. It's a service that we're very proud that we can also share with the community um, because when we have hunters, fishermen, trappers, uh, individuals who have you know, a great passion for the outdoors and uh, we, one of the things that we take pride in is trying to make sure that that can translate into information that they can utilize uh, to be safer out in the forest but also to be able to enjoy um, you know, one of the great benefits of living out here is the outdoors and, and we are kind of a key component because we are managing land landscape on such a large basis, so these are the sorts of tools that um, we can also share and extend to the community and we're very happy to do so. Uh, it's a big job to manage uh, a forest. We, we are charged with managing it sustainably. We have to make sure that there's uh, wood flow coming off this forest to, to fulfill the needs of the mills, the local industry, which provides the employment for the communities as well as we need to balance the interests with the uh, needs of sustainability for the environment as well as social aspects of the forest. So for someone that loves the outdoors, this is great. You know, you spend most of your summer outside, walking through, through all sorts of plantations and areas that are naturally regenerating. So you get to see lots of, lots of country. still need to be in the forest, you still need boots on the ground, uh, but now I think that we have tools that allow us to go forward more strategically and, and in a more um, informed fashion, and we know what to expect and where to target our efforts and our work. Uh, the work's very exciting, very dynamic, um, lots of complexity in it. Uh, never a day goes by without challenges in it. You'll drive down the same road for quite a number of years before you actually see a new forest in place. We're looking for little seedlings that are this big and you, you, you kind of get used to seeing it slowly grow so you sort of forget that your original thoughts were that nothing was going to grow here. And then today, like almost 40 years later, you don't have to look. It looks like a forest and this is, this is what forest management plans strive to achieve. You know, it's you cut the areas, but you put a forest back. <laughs>